Good afternoon, everybody. All six of you here, but uh, this is being recorded, and we'll go out to the membership for those that uh, may not have made it, uh, been able to make it, or up north, or playing golf, or doing something else exciting. Uh, we've got a uh, water main project that will be taking place inside Fiddlesticks, as you may uh, already know, that is starting uh, tomorrow. Some of the uh, items have already been delivered, um, and you've seen those out there on the sides of the street. Uh, we have a group of individuals here today to walk you through the project and answer any questions and cover any concerns that you may have for the project. Uh, this is the first phase, and up here on a map, they'll go over that first phase uh, with you, and I'm sure that many of you that are in the room today is probably on your streets. That's why you're here. Uh, we will be transitioning after this uh, into the rest of the community, and it'll take a couple years to complete the entire project. Um, but I'll let these folks speak. I'm going to introduce to you Jeff Wilson from Weston Sampson. They're the engineering firm that... Uh, got the job for this project, and, and he'll pass the mic around and go through the, the slides with you. Slide, please. You know, it's really interesting. If you look at the infrastructure across the United States, uh, we made a great investment in it years and years ago, but it's getting old, it's getting tired. So according to the latest US EPA report, Florida needs to spend about $16.5 billion, billion with a B, on drinking water infrastructure improvements over the next 20 years just so we can ensure that our drinking water systems in Florida are safe and reliable for use by the public. And American Society of Civil Engineers actually uh, prepares an infrastructure report card. And in Florida, in 2016, on a scale of A to F, with A being the best, they rated Florida's uh, uh, drinking water infrastructure as a C plus. So what is the Fiddlesticks project related to this here? It's part of the $16.5 billion that EPA says we need to invest over the next 20 years. So what are we gonna talk about today? First, we'd like to talk about introductions, who is here from our project team, We'll follow by why are we here, uh, the, an overview of the project, and then we'd like to explain to you what directional drilling is. Most infrastructure projects are put in by open trench construction. You see a big excavator come down, it bigs, digs a huge trench, destroys driveways, uh, it, but it all gets put back together, but it's a painful project. The county elected on this project to use horizontal directional drilling, and we'll explain to that it's a much less invasive way of doing infrastructure projects without impacting your, your property as minimally as possible. Uh, we'll talk about actually constructing the project. We have the contractor here who's actually building the project for us. And then we'll have some people come up and tell you how will this impact you as a resident during the construction process. And then we'll open up for construction or for questions. Slide. So who are we? Uh, this project is being led by Lee County Utilities, the water system. We have Talia Bickle, who's the county's project manager. Uh, we've got Lou Gaudio and Jack Hopper. They're our contractors with Quality Enterprises USA out of Naples, Florida. Uh, on the lower far side, I'm Jeff Wilson. I'm the engineer of record on this project. I've been living this project with Talia for the past. Uh, 18 months to, to two years. Uh, we will have Wilson Rumberger from our staff as our day-to-day -day construction observer on the site, observing everything construction does and reporting back. Uh, for our, our public information officers, we have Tracy Hayden and Kay Molner. Their job is to make sure that at the end of the day, you're happy as the residents. Slide. So why are we here? At this point, I will ask Talia Bickle to come up and explain why this project is being funded in part by Lee County Utilities. Thank you, Jeff. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'll give you some history on the projects. Uh, one of the ways that the county decide uh, which projects receive priority is based on history of work orders in a certain area. 
Um, you can see right here, um, there's a map with all the recent main breaks that have been occurring over the last few years with, um, since the project has been actually budgeted and awarded, we haven't um, been tracking on the same map um, the recent work orders. Um, so you can see there's been quite a few main breaks. Every main break is associated with a cost to the county. Um, and at one point we decide there's been enough main breaks, there's been a history of failure that justifies a replacement project. And that's what we have in this case. If you look here in this map, you can see a cluster of the different breaks that are occurring in one area over the others. Um, that is what we've defined as our critical phase. That is what is going on now, phase one for construction. Um, okay, if you can, thank you. Um, so for the project overview, um, you can see we're currently now in phase one. This is where we've had the cluster of main breaks, uh, one as recently as last month. Um, you can see here are the streets where the water main is gonna be replaced, um, assuming you guys have seen some activity um, in your neighborhoods, and it's why you're here today. Um, we will be doing the remainder of fiddlesticks as one larger phase, which will be phase two. We're currently in the process of having that portion um, out for advertisement, so we hope that in the early part of 2020, we can get that advertised for construction and awarded as well so uh, there's not too much gap in construction efforts going on. You won't notice a difference from really one phase to another besides the different areas. And uh, I'll give it back to Jeff to talk about some of the trench list technologies. Okay, if you could move that slide back one. Just some round numbers here. Uh, this first phase, it's about a two, $2.4 million, $2.5 million project. The remainder of the project is going to be about another 10. So overall, the water system getting replaced in the Fiddle Six community is, is going to be, you know, just north, of about 10 million, just north of $10 million. So it's a substantial investment that the community is, or that the county is making in the community here. Um, most water lines typically last about 50 to 60 years in a community. Fiddlesticks was developed in the mid 1980s, so it's been about 35 years. So you say, well, Jeff, why is the water system failing if it's only been 30, 35 years? What we have noticed in our business, if you start having water main breaks at about the 30 year mark, and it's attacking a lot of the metal fittings throughout the water system, it's typically due to aggressive soils, which is attacking the metals. So one of the things we're doing on this project is we're using HDPE, which is high density polyethylene pipe. And as you look around your neighborhood, you'll see a lot of those 50 foot sticks of pipe that will be fused into one solid pipe. So we minimize the amount of metal that's gonna be in the water system. Now with valves and hydrants, there will be some metal but we're going the extra step is when those are installed, we'll be wrapping them with polyethylene plastic as, a, as another layer of protection. So your water system should not fail in 30 to 35 years like the map Talia was showing you a few minutes ago. This should have a reasonable expectation of 50 to 60, maybe even 70 years. Slide. So what is directional drilling? I've got a short little video here it kind of explains a lot better than I could of what it is. Slide. A lake is an efficient, innovative way to bury pipe and cable under roads, rivers, or any other potential obstacles. Drilling begins with establishing a bore path, locating existing utilities, and choosing locations of the entry and exit pits. It's important to properly and safely set up equipment at each location. Once the operator starts drilling, they are able to guide the drill pipe and track it using a tracking beacon. A tracker monitors the head of the drill string so they know depth, position, and area of the housing. A fluid mixer mixes drilling fluids that flow through the drill to the end of the drill bit for more efficient cutting and cleaning of the borehole. Proper drilling fluids are essential for success in various soil conditions. 
Excess drilling fluid is removed using a vacuum excavator. Once the pilot bore has been completed, it's typically enlarged to one and a half the size of the new conduit or pipe being installed. This is done by utilizing a back reamer, either by a multi-step process called pre-reaming, or utilizing a swivel and pulling in the product on the initial back ream. Mud mixture then fills the space around the piper cable. Each drilling project comes with its own set of challenges. From determining the right drill size and bit configuration, to understanding soil conditions, to proper HDD tooling selection, there's a lot to consider when executing a horizontal directional drilling project. So that is the machine you'll see parked out along the street that will be drilling at the pilot hole uh, underground, attaching onto the water main and pulling it back through. What they're doing today is they're out there in the field and they're fusing 50 foot lengths of pipe together to three, four, up to 700 feet long and they'll pull it in one continuous pool. Uh, we've done a lot of directional drilling. I've been doing it for the last 20, 20 plus years and we've actually have done other distribution systems for Lee County Utilities. So it's not a new technology, but it's really a neat technology and it really does minimize the amount of restoration that's required in the neighborhood. Slide, please. So I think at this time I'd like to ask Jack or, or Lou to come up and talk a little bit about the construction. Jack is the project manager for quality and will be responsible for uh, building the project for us. Hello, everyone. Um, so we have a staging lot located at 15200 Fiddlesticks Boulevard. Uh, this is where we plan to store miscellaneous materials such as valves, hydrants, as well as equipment and some spoil material. Slide, please. Uh, the actual piping material will be staged throughout the community uh, adjacent to where we'll be fusing and performing the drilling operations. This just really keeps us from having to transport long sticks of pipe throughout the community, which could damage the pipe as well as be a safety concern. Slide, please. So our sort of our plan of attack is to start on Glen Lyon Court with our fusing and drilling and then move over to Kilmarnock Drive and work in a southerly direction with the drilling. Now once the drill crews reach the southern end of Kilmarnock Drive and Carberry Court, we'll then mobilize a utility crew to begin making connections, tying in uh, for existing services and doing testing. Uh, this utility crew will follow the same path as the drilling crew working on Glenline Court, down Kilmarnock and Carberry, up Kilburning, Kilburnie Drive, and then finishing with Fiddlesticks Boulevard. Slide, please. So if you can, uh, the more information we have on private services, the better uh, job we can do of not coming in contact with them. However, in the event any private services are damaged, we'll work with the county to get those restored. I'd like to turn it over now to Tracy. From Hi, I'm Tracy Hayden. This is Kay Molnar with Sella Molnar & Associates. We're your public information company. So what we're going to be doing is basically we look at us as your liaison. We act as a liaison between you, the residents, the county, the engineering team, and the contractor. So we're here to help you if you have any issues or problems during the construction or restoration phase, anything like that. Um, we mentioned already the private underground irrigation, electrical service, and pet fencing. You know, we had the question on the sign up for pet fencing. I don't think anybody here has any, but if you know of some of your neighbors that might have the underground pet fencing, if you could let them know to call us, that would be extremely helpful because basically we, you know, we're going to be probably um, impacting some of those areas and we're trying to not impact them as much as possible. So if you know of anybody that has it, it would be greatly appreciated if you would ask them to give us a call and let us know. Um, those contact cards, uh, you can take some and hand them out to some of your neighbors as well. Um, you're going to be seeing some flagging during the construction activities. You might have to wait a little bit. 
um, while the while the <laughs> I see that face um, while they're you know moving some materials or equipment in and out. Um, and, and they're going to work around you as best they can, but you might have to wait just a few minutes. Your driveway may not always be accessible when pulling pipe across it, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, construction activities are going to be, they're going to install the new water line. They're going to test and activate the new water lines and then do the individual connections. And you'll be noticed when they're doing the connections for you, okay? Um, and then they're going to restore the property. So in where you have sod, uh, they'll be putting sod back in where they had to impact it. Um, bushes, plants, anything like that will be restored. Okay. Notifications. All right, so water shut off. If, if there is a planned, scheduled water shut off, you will get a notice. That looks like this. That'll be, um, it's like a door hanger. It'll be on your door letting you know what date, what times there's going to be a scheduled water shutoff for you. Usually when that happens, um, there is a boil water associated with that, and you'll, you'll be made aware if there is or not during that on these notices, okay? Um, if there is a boil water, it tends to be about three days um, for them to do all the testing and get the uh, samples back, and, we'll, and there is a number on the back of the county notices that you call to find out when that boil water has been rescinded, basically when you can drink your water again and you don't have to boil it or, or drink bottled water. Um, but keep in mind, there's some old lines out here. So it's possible that there'll be emergency breaks um, while they're doing the construction. So please keep that in mind as well. If there's an emergency water break, we'll get the notices out as soon as we possibly can to you. You'll probably be calling us because you don't have water, um, or Ryan, and um, you know we'll we'll confirm yes. Oh, sorry, there's a break, but you will get a notice like this on your door, and we get them out as soon as we possibly can. Um, but keep some bottled water on hand if that does happen. You'll you want to make sure that you have a little bit of bo boiled water, or I'm sorry, bottled water, or like I said, you'll need to boil your water when the water comes back on. The one point of contact, again, that's us. That's why they have us, um, so that you don't have to go try and figure out who to call to get your help. We're here to help you. And so we want to be that one point of contact for you. Again, you have the contact cards. Take them, use them. Uh, we have the website. Our contact information is everywhere. But you can also call Ryan, and he'll certainly get in touch with us too. So. You know, you've got all kinds of all kinds of ways of getting in, co in contact with us. But probably, if you call Ryan, he's going to call us, and I'm going to call you back, so I can confirm exactly what's going on with you. Um, you can sign up for email updates or notifications on the website. Um, Ryan's going to be sending out notifications as well, but uh, we'd like to get your email so we can send out directly to you those notifications um, and, and it's just make, make sure that we have your information. Um, and then, like I said, the notifications uh, for flyers or door hangers, the boil water we talked about, but the other thing that you're, you may see, everybody won't, um, but when they're pulling that pipe across the driveways, a uh, contractor is going to put one of these on your door if they, or when they think, and if, because again, not everybody's going to have it, that your driveway might be blocked because of their pulling the pipe over. So they'll let you know a day or two ahead, right, that this is going to be happening and your driveway will be blocked. And then the morning of, the when they're pulling the pipe through, they're going to come knock on your door and find out if you need to move your vehicle out of your driveway or, you know, anything like that. Now, again, not everybody is going to be impacted by that, but if that's the case, you're going to get one of these on your, on your door. And then, of course, we're, we're coordinating with Ryan. You have your Pro-Am charity event and any other special events 
We'll be working um, with your association, your management team very closely uh, to help coordinate and, and, and stay out of your way during those events. Um, EMS, the Sheriff's Department and South Trail Fire Department are made aware. We make sure that they're aware of the construction and what roads um, the contractor is working on just for any kind of emergency situation but also continuing services, business deliveries, uh, UPS, or U uh, the mail service, um, garbage, recycle, lawn, household services, but of course, any kind of special needs transportation. Um, if, you have, if you have a neighbor or you know of someone that does have special needs services, please let us know or ask them to give us a call because um, it's always good to, to be aware of those people. You know, a lot of people may have special transportation come pick them up for dialysis every day or something. So we just like to be aware of that and make sure that we uh, give that information to the contractor. Um, but also, I would say, if for some reason you're not getting your mail service or your garbage isn't being picked up, please let me know because I don't know unless somebody calls. So please let us know because we are here to help um, facilitate those services, make sure that those services are still happening. But I don't always know unless somebody lets me know. So give me a call if those kind of situations come up as well. All right, the whole team is going to be here if anybody has any questions. We will bring the microphone to you because it's being recorded and they want to make sure that the questions are also recorded. So if anybody has any questions, uh, please let us know and somebody will... When, when the water is turned off, how long is, is the individual homeowner, homeowner likely to be without water? It depends on why the water is being turned off. This is a construction project, and we try to minimize all the impacts. If for some reason the existing water main breaks, we need to, and the existing water main is eight inches in diameter or larger, We'll need to valve it off and make that repair. And typically the county has been able to repair those within, within the day. Now, if it's because we are switching you over from the newly installed water system to the, uh, from the old water system, that's just a matter of pulling your old meter out, tying the new line in and connecting it, that's usually less than an hour. So I want to reiterate, this is a construction project. The project team, Lee County Utilities, Quality Enterprises, Wesson and Sampson, and Sela Molnar are all going to do everything we can to make this as uneventful as we can for you. But it is construction, and things beyond our control do happen. You know, I know if you've got your house with a, a, a bunch of that black pipe sitting out in the front yard, we don't like doing that. We've got to put it someplace in order to be able to assemble our project. And our goal is to keep that all within the roadway easement or the utility easement. Sometimes it gets off the easement. Anything that is damaged will be repaired by the contractor by the time this project is done. What is the timetable for phase one? Phase one, uh, Lou, I think, is it nine months or a year we have? It's one year. One year from December 2nd was the notice to proceed. As you drill the new pipeline, how close is it to the existing pipe that's there today? Our goal is to keep it five to seven feet away from the existing water main. The intent is to keep the existing water main fully operational and functioning until we have the new system up, tested, pressurized, and operational. So at one point in time, you'll have two water systems throughout your neighborhood. But one connection per house. Yes, where your water meter is now. That'll be the same location you have for your water system.
is it safe to take showers while you have a boil water in effect? It wouldn't bother me. My wife might kind of shudder a little bit, <laughs> but they, they say you're not supposed to drink the water. So I guess as long as you shower and you keep your mouth closed, you're probably in good shape. But uh, it's a safety thing. And if you are uncomfortable with showering under boil water notice, I certainly wouldn't. Personally, it wouldn't bother me. But I grew up swimming in the lakes of Ohio all the time. So that's three days. It, it is a precautionary boil water notice, and it's required by the Department of Health. Now, we may get the bacteriological test back, and they're fine, and we have to take two of those tests. That's why the reason for the length of time that it takes. Typically, they come back okay. Sometimes they don't, but it doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to get something from it. It's okay. And say a short street like Glen Lyon Court, it doesn't have that many houses on it. How long would that take to be finished? I'm going to ask Jack or Lou to uh, discuss that because I know Randy and I have talked about it a little bit. But it's really more a function of trying to get uh, an area completed and and accepted by DEP to turn on. So we we wouldn't just get this completed and and turned on to the new system. It, it's most likely going to be phased in. So we really haven't discussed if we're going to phase a, a portion of it in or not. Uh, we may decide to do that, but it may be turned on all at once at the end. Okay. Oh, so you may just lay the pipe, but you're not finished. That's correct. Once we install the pipe, like Jack had mentioned, we still have to test it, pressure test the pipe. We have to chlorinate it. Uh, then we tie in the services to it. But we have to go through a process of getting DEP to approve that pipeline to be put into service. kind of an ongoing I say, mess is going to be in our area for quite a while. The, the heavy <laughs> stuff will be done first. The, that, that's the drilling of the pipe. What you see out there now, all the pipes stacked up, once that gets drilled, the, then that's you won't see any more pipe on the ground. But we'll be back in to dig holes at the locations where the services are tied in. Uh, we'll be doing that or, or putting in hydrants. Okay. And is our clubhouse affected at all? In because, terms of the, yeah, I might Because, um, you know, even though the clubhouse address is Cannon Gate, it sort of comes in on Glen Lyon. So is the clubhouse getting repiped? The clubhouse will get repiped in phase two. Oh. Where phase one stops is right here at the beginning of the parking lots by the clubhouse. Phase two will incorporate of the clubhouse improvements. Also, if we signed up on that sheet, does that automatically get us on that list to get emails? We don't have to sign up on that. We'll, we'll add you if you signed in on the sign-in sheet. Um, let me jump up here so there's not this voice just talking from behind for anybody that's going to watch a presentation. This is a this is a, the, about the nicest way you can put in a pipe is with the horizontal directional drill. There will be some people that will have a pretty good size pit in their area where the, where the drill will go in and out, say at least the size of this large round table, Jack? Maybe. Probably bigger. Um, you'll see that, but then you, and you'll see this piece of equipment just as you saw in the video, and it will put that pipe through, and then there'll be another pit that it comes out. So there'll be some areas where people may have this pipe sticking out of the ground for a while, you know, as they move on and they fuse the next pipe. And so there may be that. And, and restoration usually doesn't come until after all of it is complete and, and they know that the pipe is good. It's been pressure tested. They don't have to go back in because the contractor doesn't want to have to restore and then come back and dig it back up again. So there will be a period of time where it may not look so wonderful, you know, in your yard. I mean, your, your yards, your lawns look great. Um, but there will be a period of time when, when you'll have to live with that before the restoration happens. So, but if, you know, if you feel like something needs to be attended to, again, give us a call so that we can, so that we can do that. We can address that with the contractor. And Kay does know what she's talking about with directional drilling through neighborhoods. Because Kay, it was probably six, seven, eight years ago when 
We had a project in your parents' neighborhood that was all directional drilled. So Kay is very familiar with what you'll be going through. The only thing that's a handicap in this kind of development, if you want to call it collection here, and that I can speak to it as a seasonal person, you could be working at my house in August. I'm not here. I have no idea what the hell you're doing. So that will be my concern because all of a sudden I may have to fly down just to camp. <laughs> so, and I'm sure there'll be other residents who will have that same concern. The entire project from start to finish will probably take a solid two, two and a half years to complete all the construction. If we try to do it just in the off season, that two and a half years would stretch out to six, seven years. So uh, in discussions with the county, we thought it was best just to, to bite the bullet, start, and just go through as quickly as we can. And I know your general manager, he would have, read, he would have preferred for us to do it strictly in the off season too, but uh, we had to get it done. Anyone else have any other questions? Uh, I think I'm I think I'm at uh, ground zero of where you're starting this. So I'm just curious when you're going to start the drilling. I am right at the right end of Glen Lyon Court. There, right at the very end. Of the, yeah, is that where you're starting? And if so, are you, is that is that where the drilling starting? Drilling will actually start at the other end. Oh, okay. The drilling will actually start at the other end of Glen Lyon Court and work towards you. And uh, we're hoping to have this whole stretch finished if everything goes to plan uh, by the first of the year. So, which, with just the drilling alone. Please understand that it's a construction phasing schedule and anything can happen with underground construction. <laughs> Anyone else with questions? Ryan, would you like any closing remarks? Thank you all. I wasn't planning on it. So um, we've been uh, speaking with these folks uh, for the last several months. And, you know, it's a great thing for the community. Uh, unfortunately, is a kind of a, a headache uh, to go through the process. Um, but they've communicated really well with us. Uh, Ryan Bell, our director of HOA, will also uh, be instrumental in overseeing this project with myself. If at all, at any times, there's any issues, please reach out to one of us, and they're really quick at getting back with us, and you can see there's a pretty talented team assembled um, on this. So at any point, if there's any issues or concerns, uh, reach out to me. There's the website that they mentioned with the updates. Uh, so I think that... Uh, other than you know dealing with the headaches of, of the construction, especially in our busiest time of the year and the roadways not being that wide, um, they'll do their best uh, to, to try to make this as seamless as possible. So thanks everybody for coming out. And uh, as I said, if you need anything, please uh, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.